Founded in 1991 by patients, the FSHD Society is the largest grassroots network of FSHD patients, their families, and research activists. The FSHD Society offers a community of support, news, and information for the millions of people affected by FSHD worldwide. This is FSHD Society Radio. Welcome all to the FSHD Society Radio Show. Thanks for being here again on another month as we bring these, these great guests on these certain episodes. Don't forget to find us on Spotify and anywhere else that you get your uh, podcast. We're also on YouTube. We post these on Facebook as well and other social media uh, platforms. And you can keep up with the show and get to know a little bit maybe more about the guests because there's a lot of links on there and websites where you can find more information about them. We've had some Amazing people come on through the episodes over the years. I think this is now uh, walking into the eighth year that I've been doing this podcast for the FSHD Society and have really had a lot of fun talking to some amazing, amazing people. Today is one of those amazing people that has shown us what you can do, even though you have FSHD, continuing to strive in all the work that you continue to do and love our community out there. We have a lot of great artists and musicians and actors and actresses and, and directors all within the industry, as well as other people just working hard, doing what they do, regardless of the disease. And we hope that this guest inspires you today. We welcome Donna Russo into the show. Welcome, Donna. Thanks for being here, spending a little bit of time talking about yourself. And Thank you so much. I'm so glad that, uh, that I'm here, Tim. Yeah, me too. Me too. I know it was a it was a work in progress for us. Uh, more on my side for a communication. Those that know me well know, holy cow, it's sometimes tough to tie Tim down to uh, even do these shows. So this is this is a great opportunity for us to sit down and learn more about yourself. And Donna, when when we have guests on, a lot of the things that people seem to really gravitate to when we have guests on is you know they want to know about the guest, as in their FSHD story. What is that background? What brings them to the radio show that they want to share? So maybe kind of we start there, you know, a little bit of like when when were you diagnosed and 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 start that that journey if you can to kind of go back to the I don't know if it's the way back machine, but uh, the time machine, so to speak. <laughs> okay. Um when I was a little girl I couldn't whistle. Mm. And FSH uh ha- is something to with the facial muscles, the scapular muscles, and the, the, your legs too. Right. And um, so I couldn't whistle for a Christmas show, but I never knew what it was. I just thought I couldn't whistle. Mm. So, and I left it alone. And uh, I hummed the song in the part that was supposed to be whistled. And so that's how I get through that. Um, I was very concerned that I couldn't whistle, but I just uh, left it go. And I thought, well, that's okay. Mm. So, and I did, then I went about my life. I took lots of dance classes. I started dancing at 10. So uh, I really didn't think anything else. I didn't think anything of it. Mm. And I danced, I danced all through grade school, college, uh, high school, everything. And I was, you know, okay. I didn't find anything wrong. And then one day I was uh, at the gym. And I did a lot of the arm presses together. Yeah. Like, like a lot that I tired myself out. And so I, the next day I noticed that it was hard to raise my hand. Hmm. And so I thought, wow, this is weird. But I just thought I made myself, Oh, you worked out a lot. You know, that's, that's all that is. Yeah. And then about two years later or three years later, maybe, uh, the other arm was giving me a problem raising. And I thought, well, I better, I better, like, this is a, this doesn't seem right. Well, maybe I should, maybe I should get it checked out. Hmm. And I did. And uh, that's when I got the diagnosis that I had FSH. Hmm. And, uh, I just tried to continue to uh, go through life normal and do as much as I could 
You know, I just noticed that things were getting weaker. Uh, my arms, and then it was like mm -hmm. my back of my legs started getting a little bit weak. And you know, maybe years later, the other leg would get mm -hmm. more weak. So it was like a slow, uh, a slow loss of the strength right. of the muscles. And uh, my love for dance never stopped. So I kept going and uh, I took a dance workshop with someone by the name of Tam Warner. Mm. And she uh, made up a dance using how much I could lift my arms. And uh, it's on YouTube. It's called I Won't Give Up, Donna Russo. And uh, it shows me with two other dancers who are like my my extension. Hmm. You know, they're like the ex extension of my arms and my. Oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah. at that time uh, I was walking with a cane, and uh, you know Tam's a wonderful choreographer, mm -hmm. and uh, we did that dance, and we did it at a bit abilities expo. Hmm, that's cool. All right. Yeah, we did it like several, like three times. At different oh. abilities expo, one uh, two in Los Angeles and one in San Jose, mm. where we were there for a weekend. Mm. And the, the abilities expo is one. I just have to talk a little bit about that because it, you know what that is, right? You know abilities expo, right? I don't. Why don't? And just in case those that don't know, because is it just in your California area? Because that's where you're from, or is it more national? It's it, it's like in Houston, it's New Jersey, mm -hmm. it's New York, okay, Philadelphia, yeah. Chicago, different cities, and it's like a show for all the different technology that's available to people with disabilities. Okay, so it's really amazing. Plus, they have workshops mm -hmm. and performances, like we did, you know, with dance mm -hmm. and assisted um, animal animal training. Uh, it's just amazing what they have. Wow. wow. So then you did this dance at that expo, kind of highlighting your skills that you still have in dance, regardless of FSHD. When you talked about, though, the diagnosis part, um, you know, what, what was that moment like? Because you go from, you know, shoulder soreness difficulty lifting after maybe a more strenuous workout as you described it. And then that leads kind of down this path of a diagnosis in front of a doctor. What were you, what were you thinking when you went into the doctor's office, if you can recall what you thought was going on to what they were telling you was going on? I got a little emotional. I, I, I got a little saying, Oh, this isn't going to be really bad. It's not mm -hmm. going to, you know, I'm going to, and then I started thinking, oh boy, what happens if I can't dance? You know, mm. what will I do? And that's in my mind where I said, I'm going to do just as much as I can. Mm. And uh, I still have that desire to move. Mm. And so I'm going to try to make it work mm. how I want to. And that's when I, I, I said to Tam, like, I, I, I want to do these videos because I want people to see, because I still have that passion for dance. Yeah. And so but we did mm. together, despite our challenges. Mm. Uh, she has a, um, a challenge um, with like a, her heart. Okay. Okay. So we, yeah. So there's like your common ground. She's, she's working through something, her something. And then yours is, of course, is FSHD. Um, yeah. And then together kind of make this collaboration. Yeah. That's beautiful. So we, uh, so we did I Won't Give Up with uh, two amazing dancers. And you can watch that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, Kalea uh, Sheeran and uh, Tara Nicole Hughes were mm -hmm. the other dancers with me in that. So Now, and you, do, you do more, though, than than dance. I mean, that is definitely a passion. There's no question. It comes out in that. I do implore everyone to look that video up. I watched it several times. It's very good. Very good. I don't know anything, Donna, about dancing like that at all, but there is definite beauty and flow to it. 
Um, I like how you described it as like that's the that was the extension of yourself. Your arms, your legs were were those dancers. And to hear you say that made me go, oh, that makes a lot of sense of what I was visually seeing. Um, but dancing isn't isn't the only thing you do. You also do some acting, right? Yes, that. Yeah, I met this uh, very talented uh, young woman, um, Peggy Lane, mm -hmm. and uh, because I was looking for uh, a place to move to that was on the first floor that had its own bathroom, its own bedroom, and just like where I could park my car when I was driving. And I was looking for an apartment and she had been taking care of her parents and she knew what it was like um, for mobility issues. And so I came upon her, she was looking for a roommate. Hmm. So I came upon her um, advertisement for okay. And uh, she knew some people that I knew from the entertainment industry. And she also ha was on the first floor, had a garage with parking underground where I could put my, my car right, right from out the door. I could have access to my car. Hmm. She owned separate bathroom, bedroom, everything was separate. Wow. And uh, the one thing though was that the shower it, the shower had a tub in my bathroom and I couldn't step over. Yeah, I couldn't step over. Sure. So she had a walk-in shower in her room. And she said to me, well, when you need to use the shower, you can use mine. And just, you know, because mm -hmm. she was used to doing that for her dad. Her dad needed a walk-in. So he would mm -hmm. go also to her walk-in shower because the tub was high for him yeah and so then she had the concept of this uh she created this donna on the go mm -hmm. show with a lighthearted view of all the challenges we go through um as people with disabilities so and, uh, it was peggy's idea i mean to kind of see that there was something there to kind of film and and spin off of that life and show people? She said she's, she wanted to bring an awareness. Mm -hmm. And she also uh, wanted to bring, like, she, she thought humor was a good way to get it across. So it's a lighthearted view. Because I don't get, I don't get, uh, I mean, it's no joke, FSH. Right. But I try not to take it all too seriously. Mm-hmm. Because it's already, I'm emotional. Already, it's not a joke, you know. Yeah, right. So we didn't want people to get so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's uh, no question that that's not at all the premise of of the episodes. Uh, they're not serious per se, um, but they are real. I mean, you're showing the struggle is real, uh, like season uh, one going to Target. I mean, some of the like Target, like, okay. And I love Target. You know, I think a lot of people do. Um, but to see it from uh, Donna on the go's eyes <laughs> and <laughs> how, how that goes, there's, there's one particular point. I think you're like down like the cat food aisle in there in a scene. And you look up at what definitely appears to be a bag of heavy stuff that should not be that high in a certain situation that you're in because you're in a scooter and you're doing right. your shopping. And that perspective, I think everyone feels it. They're like, whoa, well, how is she going to do that one? You know, and it kind of gives you that like real life perspective, but yet not being too serious. So I'm kind of glad that you preface that, that it is supposed to be kind of like, okay, we already know it's serious, but how do we make the serious a little bit funny? Because that was, that was that kind of the take then of every episode going forward. Right. And I always loved acting and, and uh, yeah. filming. And I've done some some film and TV. Like I, I seem to get like roles as like characters, mm. you know, like aliens, monsters, dolls. Really? Uh, yeah. It's because of my size. <laughs> and so that was. But I I I enjoy it. Yeah. 
a lot. What's your out of those roles that you just mentioned? What's what's the what's the type of role that you would gravitate to more over another? I would like to be. Uh, we always talk about this is performers with disabilities. Mm-hmm. I would like to represent like a performer with a disability who, or a character that is a lawyer, a doctor, a school teacher. Right. That we see all the time. Real. Okay, yep. You know, is it a real? Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, it's it's fun to play characters like that are, you know, monsters, aliens, whatever. But also have some representation as like people who do everyday Mm-hmm. Do things in the world, mm-hmm. you know, like occupations, you know. Right, because there are people that are those occupations that you mentioned uh, that have disabilities, challenges, etc. They're out there. So why do you think then that, be it be you know the Hollywood world or whoever makes those casting decisions, whatever you know, the the idea that that's not a good idea to have someone in that role. Where do you think that that came from? That thought process of let's let's avoid putting talented actors in that role if they have those disabilities. Maybe they think it's just going to be too much to have somebody with a disability on set. Maybe mm-hmm. you no, know, too expensive or too much. Uh, that they have to change or. Yeah. Ac- accommodate maybe mm-hmm. but the more that we the more that we get out there and show people then the better it is mm-hmm. that they're gonna say oh yeah she could do that <laughs> true yeah, right yeah and, yeah and then i think then you start seeing the character they're playing not the person playing the character you know they're not they're not seeing someone in if it's power equipment wheelchair etc or, or working through the scenes with some type of adaptive material or tools or whatnot. I think, right. I no, think, I, I yeah. just think that society is probably too, uh, they think that society is too scared to see that, but that's too and real. They're not, there is something that they're not used to or, right. or right. they're getting used to. And we, we're, we're making a lot of progress. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, and I think more and more will come mm-hmm. as the, uh, as time goes on, you know, and people see mm-hmm. the talent out there. Absolutely. Now, you had also another episode where um, you asked a gentleman in a scene to, you know, that was playing a character in this episode where he, you asked him to go get your car, right? Wasn't that a part of that? Uh, and he left into the parking structure, drove your car back for you. Uh, there was that moment where you had to ask him for help, you know, as your character had to ask another for help and like in the real world of asking, you know, for help, do you find that that is difficult to do or to have to ask someone? Yeah, it it is difficult to have to ask someone because you're used to doing things. Well, uh, depends on when, when you're become disabled, but Mm -hmm, uh, it's just hard because you want to be, want to be able to do it yourself. You know, you don't want to have to, or at least me, I'm speaking for me. I don't want to have to bother somebody to do something for me. Right. You know, I would like to be able, but it, it, I'm getting better because it's, it's like, it's okay. You, you need this help and you really need somebody to help you. So yeah, it's, it's okay. Once in a while to, to ask for help, even though it was really hard, very hard. Yeah. I had a um, friend tell me once, um, uh, his name is Justin Sisek, and he was part of this documentary called I'll Push You. It was about two friends that walked 500 miles through Spain on this big you know, path that people take, uh, some type of, um, how about like a pilgrimage, and he wanted to do it, even though he was in a wheelchair. So Justin's in the wheelchair, and his uh, friend, uh, Patrick, he asked him to push him, hence the documentary, I'll Push You. So in the midst of the documentary, I had him on a very, very early episode of this FSHD Society Radio Show, and he does not have FSHD. He has a different 
um, autoimmune disease, actually. And I asked him that same question. You know, I said, um, when it comes to, especially in the documentary, I'm like, you appear to be almost like you feel like you're a burden to people because they have to help you. They have to do things for you or you have to ask. And he said that, you know, you got to get over that to a point where you have to get your mindset to go, don't deprive somebody that wants to help you. Don't deprive them of that. They want to. So don't take that from them. You know, don't see it as a burden. See it as this is something that they're willing to do. They want to do. I found that very profound. And I want to kind of bring that up to you. And I have to other sense, and maybe like, you know, your two cents of, of kind of what that kind of statement, you know, can you relate to that kind of mindset when asking for help or getting it from someone? Yeah. I mean, I can relate to that. Some people do want to help you, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, it's just like, they want to say, well, let me do that for you. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You know? Yeah. And so I can, I can relate to that. Mm. What you're saying. Yeah. Some people don't deprive them. of They, they really do want to help you, but yeah, it is something that you have to get over. Mm. So. And when you got your early diagnosis time, right. And, and, and you mentioned the disease was a slow progression, like it is for so many of us. My, neurologist told me it's like, you know, stair falls, you're here and then slowly it'll drop and then maybe some time and then something else will happen and so forth. It goes and the, the stair falls will become quicker as you get older and all this. It's almost like uh, advanced aging to some degree, you know, uh, things are happening faster and uh, you start losing ability of, you know, losing function in certain things quicker. So as, as you look at yourself, you know, now where you are, Obviously, your passion seems to very much be strong in the world of the arts of dance and acting, being creative, because you know the brain is not being affected. You know, right. The body is, but the brain is not. So, how do you um, cope with the fact that your brain is firing the passion to be within that world of still doing that work of dance and acting and creativity, but yet your body doesn't want to cooperate sometimes? Um, I just. I just think to myself, well, uh, you have to do things the way you are now. Mm. So if maybe I was acting and walking to do a conversation or walking or dancing and jumping or something, there is a different way I, I need to do the scene with, with the dialogue. Maybe mm. I need just to do scenes that are seated, um, hmm. which is okay. Yeah. Still enjoying acting. Mm-hmm. And, um, because everything, even dancing, I was like, maybe I can't jump or maybe I can't leap or something, but it's all in the face. It's in the face. Like, so even when, even when the muscles are going, um, I try to emote, uh, you know, from the face, from the eyes, mm-hmm. uh, because that's what I have. Mm. That's what I've got now. Mm. So, and a lot of dancing and acting is showing in your face mm-hmm. the emotions your person is going through. Mm-hmm. So if I could still use, I have to use it much more, I think, uh, that things have been taken away, like, you know, muscles have been taken away. Right. It's more in the face. Like when I dance, it's a lot in the face. Hmm. And uh, in acting, too, it's a lot in the face. Just, I don't know, you, you saw Garage, right? With yes. With the face? Yeah. Okay, when I get out of the car. hmm and they're arguing. And I just get out of the car. I was almost in tears that day. I was in tears that day. Because I just looked at them and I just was like, are you serious? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you see that in my face. You see yes. she was like, she just looked at her friend. I always say she, but it's me. But Donna Reed, she looks at her friend and just goes, you know, just stop. Right. Enough. Yeah. But you do portray that, per- yeah. You portray that very well. I mean, you did that throughout every episode. There's many moments where you could read the emotion in your face, 
even though FSHD right is 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 fighting against you still a little bit of having to create that uh, quite an adapt an adaption to do that in your acting, despite the fact that a muscle wasting disease is is trying to make it difficult. So what is what is what is the key there for you? Like how are you? I'm not an actor, so I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to use the right word. Like, like, what do you pull from to create that look or that expression? Or like, are you going into like a memory or something like that where you can reenact what that feels like so that people understand by the look? Um, in that particular scene, it was like, I was really in that moment mm. where I felt like, are you, you know, are these two people really serious right now? They're arguing over this. Yeah. You know, and I was like, and then I was like, that's the part where I felt like I'm such a, I'm a burden or I'm being a, mm. you know, like I'm just asking for my parking space for God's sake. Right. You know? And then as I was feeling at the tears, just, I did, I was in tears crying yeah. a little bit there or starting to feel, fill up. And yeah. that's because, you know, this is just like too much. Can you, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't believe you two people. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing here with this walker. Yeah. And you're continuing on your thing in my space. Yes. Yeah. I'm starting to get angry about it now. <laughs> <laughs> but. But rightfully so. And those are the things that make those episodes great is the fact it is real. These are real struggles that people have. It's relatable. Um, they understand that. And to to put it on film, to video it, to produce it in a way that is, it can be funny. It can be heart-wrenching. It can be frustrating. And we're feeling that all through your character. I think that's pretty remarkable. And, it's, and, they're, and they're short episodes, everybody. Like this is like, quick yeah. you know right they're short which yeah. you know people's attention span is very <laughs> right so you know you gotta add you gotta make them short mm. you know so people can like really continue to want to watch them you know <laughs> was that on purpose and was that like a pre-production type you know like when you're storyboarding it so to speak of like this is what we want to do this is how we want it to look and and this and that yeah. was yeah. that brought up was that like intentional yes keep it short and yeah to the point i actually went through something like that uh garage where really? i was getting my hair cut this is actually how this story came but yeah. i actually was in a parking space waiting to get my hair cut somebody took the start Mm -hmm. and there was nowhere else for me to go or and yeah. I just got so frustrated yeah. and I went into the shop I went into the salon and I said you know somebody's in the somebody's in the handicap spot mm -hmm. and I can't I couldn't park mm. there and I, I got a little upset yeah so they somebody to move his car so they did move it in your in your real life story after you said something huh did did they I ever admit to didn't understand why I was upset? Really? Yeah. Then that so, probably made you more upset. At least it would for me. <laughs> I said, like, well, the lines are there because you know, you're not supposed to be there because I'm supposed to fit, you yeah. know, and be able to come out with my walker. Right. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> frustrating. It is. When you have a, like, well, let me first start by asking this. With those episodes, even though they're short, and I know only by a little bit of that, you know, for instance, these episodes, it's XYZ amount of content, but there's back end work. If there's research for me and those kinds of things for the guests and everything, you start to know uh, questions I'm going to ask and so forth. So, you know, some podcasters say, well, that's an equation, right? It's like, if you have about a half hour worth of content, you're going to at least triple that in your research time, maybe after editing and so forth. If you do that, X, Y, Z. So if your episodes are, you know, under 10 minutes, 10 minutes long, give or take, um, how much, how much though production time really goes in that to these? Cause they look quick and clean, but there's no way they're just filming that quick and clean. I and mean, there must be a lot of work involved before you start rolling and after. 
Yes. Uh, there's a story <laughs> line, there's a script writing, which Peggy did. Yeah. And we had uh, editing, mm. which that takes a lot of time. Yeah. We had uh, a couple people, um, Craig Hutchison, who's mm. also a co a co uh, producer, a mm. co executive producer. Executive producer. Oh, executive yeah. producer. Peggy's executive producer. But he helped with some of the edi editing for Garage. Um, they worked together on that. Um, then Vince J Dedrick Jr., who's like a legendary uh, stunt coordinator, stunt man. Really? Yes. Wow. He worked with the huh. several big names like. Um, Jeff Bridges nice. and did like some of the scenes in Romancing the Stone. Good so he did, he, he did, did our episode really mm -hmm. where there's a, the, the runaway wheelchair mm. and, um, you know, I work, well. a lot of, there's a lot of talented people there that I've worked with and it's, yeah. you know, people that Peggy knew and, um, Cam, I knew, and she's just a wonderful choreographer. Uh, there's just a lot of talented people that got together. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it is it is a remarkable collaboration. And um, there's a there's a spot, and 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 you can find all this information on um, you know Donna dash on dash the dash go. So Donna on the go add the dashes in between dot com. The episodes are there. Uh, also, there is a tab that says awards. I mean, there's a lot of awards listed here. So this yeah. has been this has been recognized multiple times at multiple uh, different like uh, indie indie uh, short fest certificate of achievement. I mean, there's like there's a lot. I mean, you're scrolling and scrolling. It's like so it's so it's been recognized. And how has that response um, been for you? You know, did you? Did you expect that going in? Is it all been kind of a surprise? Uh, I did not know where Peggy put it in for all these awards, <laughs> all these awards but yeah, um, it was like a real pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. And I was just really, really happy. And I just, I was just like, yay. Okay. This is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very, very, uh, uh great surprise mm -hmm. yeah i think it's you know i think everybody wants to be recognized for the hard work that they put into it you talked about the team of people that were involved the time it takes we enjoyed the quick or you know uh quick enjoyment of the uh, finished outcome of what it is and that is kind of like life right i mean if it's uh sports you don't see the athlete working out all the time you see the end result you see the game for actors and actresses uh, all those that work on the film the end result is you know the episode or the the film or you know the the final release of that movie when it you know when everyone sees it at its final production they don't they don't get to see all the back work and how much time effort and talent that goes into something like that um and at the end of a day you know when you would film and and work on this um there were were were, were there ever days that you were just you know for me I, I get exhausted quickly. So I guess that's where I'm going with, with this question. When you do that kind of scene, you talked about the runaway wheelchair in, you know, in particular, and that looked a little more physical than the others possibly. Um, how do you feel after a, a day of shooting that? It's, it's, uh, it's many things. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's, a, it's a tiring. And it's also invigorating because you're like, I can't wait to see this is fun, you know? Yeah. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Um, happiness. And then you're just like grateful for all these people that have contributed. Uh, and then you're like, wow, we just did another one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you celebrate. You know, I mean, one time we went to the smokehouse after we did an episode. I think it was Garage. Mm. Yeah. And we just kind of like 
you know, enjoyed each other's company and just celebrated each other. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the time is like, okay, wow. Now we get to like, now we get to celebrate and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Reap the benefits of the hard work, right. And how it feels and working as a team. There's nothing, there's almost nothing better than that feeling of collaborating talents together for the common goal. It's, it's always a remarkable feeling when it's over. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what's in the future? What do you, what's the next project? Is it more Donna on the go? Is it other things? Have you slowed the dancing down at all? Are you continuing to do more of that too? I am. Mm -hmm. I am right now. Um, I mean, there's always things in our head. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's people want to do more. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, I've just been uh, exploring like also yoga mm. and uh, Tai Chi classes. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just trying to keep my strength because mm. it's been a little hurdle here mm. and there. Like, mm. but just, just trying to keep the body that I still have working, like engaged mm. and working. I think that's really important just to keep uh, moving what you have. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, just keeping that as viable as possible. Um, yeah, because you know, and 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 of course, keeping your mind in a good, in a good, in a good place. You mentioned yoga. I know that helps a lot of people with that. Do you do any meditation or or things like that to kind of keep your focus? Yes. Positive. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. What I would be What would be like your? Do you have like a daily routine that you would share with people? Maybe advice even of kind of like what you do. This works for you. So you can keep in the dance and can keep with the creativity without going down some, you know, dark negative hole of, uh, you know, what FSHD can be. And I do get those times. Sure. I tell you. Um, but I try to like do the yoga in the mm. morning or whenever do mm. some exercises with weights mm. I Do that and, um, just moving my legs. Mm. Um, doing some chair yoga, doing some dance with uh, some people from New York with ZCO Dance Project. I do some classes with them. Nice. Just a meditation. You mentioned that. I, I do try to like just have quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just, I keep myself going with like I thank you so much for inviting me on this program because this is part of what I do too. Yeah. It's part of keeping me active and out there uh, because I don't, I don't like go out regularly because it's hard for me to get in and out of a car mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. assistance. Right. So like this kind of zoom things are very helpful to me mm. because it keeps me out there. Like I, I, I like people and I like to talk to them, you know. But you're in the right place, yeah, for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel connected, you know. Yeah, because there is a whole community of people out there, right, with FSHD. I don't know what the real numbers would be. I think it's higher than they estimate that have this, and we all have it uh, attacking us in different various, various degrees. Um, for whatever for whatever reason, but I always found that uh, mentally, though, it, it kind of affects us all very similarly, right? Like if, if something loses in the body, it kind of affects the mind. And I love asking those that are I I I always say wiser than me, and you are one of those people. How do you keep going, right? And so I'm glad that you had to, this time to share that part um, with all of us because I always find that that's that's massively valuable. If I can keep my mind going in a positive direction more that's going to help my body physically want to keep doing right the things I want to do and love to do regardless. So my last question for you then is, and it is my last question for a lot of people that I have on the show is, 
if someone was just recently given their diagnosis, you know, I always call it in a lot of cases, it's usually like a doom and gloom. You know, you have this disease, there's no cure, there's no treatment. You know, some doctors even say, you know, take it easy, watch what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Even though 20 minutes before they were given the news, they were, there, there wasn't much difference, you know, from the time they were for diagnosis to after. So if that person just got this news, maybe just today or just this week, very, very recently, and now they're listening to you, Donna, and, and how you're living your life now, what would be advice you would give them? Wow, um, I'm going to start to get emotional now. <laughs> um, what would I say to them? Just uh, keep, try to keep doing what you want to do mm -hmm. um, and change it. Yeah. If you need to adapt to it, try to change it. And uh, just surrender. Mm. Um, surrender. Mm. I, I'm trying not to worry uh, mm. too much lately, but it's really hard. Yeah. Um, we've, you've been taken care of this far. Mm. So just like have a faith that you'll, you'll be taken care of. Mm. Well said. Well yeah. Said. yeah. And the universe hears your prayers mm. or your thoughts. Mm. So, yeah, that's, that's about what I can say because there's always <laughs> going to be days that are like hard. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they suck. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of days that suck, and uh, I always say the less of those in a row, then the better, you know. And uh, or I would tell myself, um, you know, just one more. Let's do one more. Let's just do one more. One more walk. One more. Or when I take my dog for a walk, the fact when I get back to my driveway, I'm like, I did it. I did one more. I did one more. It was slower. It was harder. Don't care. I got back here. I started here, went around, came back, did one more. And then I'll deal with tomorrow when it gets here, if it gets here. One more. So that's, that is, I think, similar, right? We, we, we kind of share that. Yeah. Uh, we're right. You're just like, because the changes, even though they feel like, they're stretched apart, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the stair falls and so forth, but man, you know, like anything, you know, how kids grow quick, grow quickly on you. And you're like, where did that time go or whatever? Um, it doesn't feel slow. It feels like it's quicker. And I don't know why that is, but, uh, it is hard not to let the negative thoughts say, okay, man, I'm a lot worse than I was a year ago, or I'm a lot worse than I was, you know, two years ago, five and so forth and this and that even though we know that part is coming, um, it's like, how do you continue? And that's where I kind of like micro it down to, I don't have to think that far in the future. I don't have to think that far in the past even. Let's just say one more day, get one through, you know. Yeah, just do today. Right, just do today. That should be a shirt. <laughs> that should be like FSAG side shirt, just do today. Uh, well, thanks, Donna, very much for uh, joining us today and... Um, I don't know if you had any final thoughts before I let you go. I mean, uh, you've given us so much of your time right now already, and um, I loved every minute of it. Thank you. I loved it too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a great line. Yeah. Just, just you today. <laughs> just you today. Yeah. We got to, I think, I think you better hurry up and trademark that. I think that's going to be, <laughs> so now it's going to be out there in the universe. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Well, thanks, Donna. You take care. Thanks for being here. And uh, I know we'll, we'll, I'm sure, meet again and talk again soon. You be well. Peace. Peace. That is Donna Russo. She is uh, a great guest um, on the show. Um, and she has done amazing things in her life. Uh, and you could see it. You can still see it. It's all on Donna on the go right now. It's all out there for you to watch. I watched every episode and loved it. And uh, I thought it was funny. Um, even a little bit emotionally, though it was supposed to be funny. Um, I didn't expect to, to draw out of her in this conversation what we did, her raw emotion of what this is doing to her and so many of us, the taxation of 
a muscle wasting disease that you live and get a front row seat to, along with your loved ones, along with people that care for you and love you, they, they see it too. I uh, don't want to leave them out. And then, of course, never want to leave out ever again how it affects so many young people. And if it affects us, and I'm in, I'm 48, I feel like Donna is in that same realm, you know, having it earlier in life, you know, midlife, whatnot. And there's so many young people that deal with it earlier. It affects them quicker. And for the love of God, we got to do something about it. And that's kind of where you know, FSHC Society does what they can along with other uh, groups and foundations uh, to fight this disease. There has to be something we can do to slow it down, to cripple it, to fight back and do something. And that, and that to me is the takeaway here. We talk always about adaption, about moving forward, doing it anyway, attacking the day. And sometimes those feel like just words, words um, like a mission statement at a you know company. You know, people say, "Oh, we had a great mission statement, this and that." But really, what you want is people on a mission. And I think we have to be as a society, people on a mission and more unified. Um, over the last year of doing this show, uh, I'm not sure what month this episode is going to be airing in, but it's definitely in the last quarter of the year. Over this 2023. I've heard negativity. I've heard negativity. I've heard um, you know, another podcast attacking the FSHD Society and what we're doing and, 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 and how they're helping people and where are they spending money and all this crap. And is negativity. It does nothing but, 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 but bring down the fight and slow it down. Uh, yet you hear great foundations also doing great work, Chris Carino Foundation and so forth, to name one, uh, uh, World FSHD, uh, the uh, groups in Canada. Um, uh, all the names now are just kind of jumbling together right now in my mind because you know I'm just kind of winging this this little thought process of why is there so much divide when you have someone like Donna who is doing everything she can to keep it together to go one more day to keep going and we have to find something some cure some treatment so people like Donna and everyone else that I mentioned uh, doesn't have to deal with this any longer. Because we don't know. We don't know what the next day is going to bring, and no one does. But man, it sure feels like we kind of do understand what the next day brings to some degree. More pain, more problems, more suffering, more weakness, more something I can't do instead of something I wish I could or something I could still do and I can't. And the frustration mounts. So it, in, it leads me then to this. Um, definitely visit the FSHD Society. Be a part of that community. Visit other foundations that you deem is a great group to be with. And you don't have to pick one, right? There's there's multiple. I follow the Chris Carino Foundation, of course, because I have a kind of a, uh, um, uh, a podcast uh, host crush on the guy, right? He's great because he does he does radio. Love it. I love listening to his broadcasts. I do that often and uh, love his style. And Chris is great. And so hence, I follow his foundation. Uh, in our community profiles, you know, we air those the first or the second Tuesday of every month. Tune in for all those. Hot off the press. It's on what that uh, one of the last Thursdays of the month there on the calendar. But there's so many other things to get involved with. Uh, young professionals group, feeling fit with FSHD, early onset. Um, uh, it's a parents roundtable. And you have all the chapter meetings to be a part of. There's so many chapters from North Texas to Virginia to North Carolina, uh, Chicagoland area near me here. <laughs> there's supposedly is a Wisconsin base, you know, that I guess I can definitely help. Fortify. I've only met two other people in the state of Wisconsin um, that have this disease face to face. And it is a lonely disease when that's all you meet. So, why are we not connected more? What are we doing more? Well, the problem is maybe there's people feeding a divide in the, in, in the community instead of feeding the positive and being unified. So, that's my two, two cents with it. And when I see Donna, someone that gets that emotional and rightfully so in how the disease is affecting her life, and what's to come, it's, uh, it's, it gets to a point where phew, enough's enough. And I think the only way through it is through it together. And that's kind of where I kind of leave this episode with you. So visit the FSHDsociety.org. You can definitely email me. I think it's been a while since I've uh, shared that email uh, with you. It's fshdradio at fshdsociety.org. My inbox is open and empty, folks. Fill it up. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know what kind of guests you want on the show. Let's start a forum there. Write in my 
inbox and we can we can start kind of rattling off some of your thoughts and things. Follow me on Facebook personally or through FSHD Society is great too. Uh, I'm here for the community in every way I possibly can. Thanks for being on the show. Check out all past episodes as well where you find your podcasts. I find them on Spotify. You can find all our episodes there as well, uh, including that Justin Sisek uh, episode uh, when he's on with uh, Patrick Gray and um, from I'll Push You. That's a very early episode, like within the first like three. Great episode. Check that out. Go to the Wayback Machine for that. Don't make fun of how I sound. We have better microphones now. So anyway, I digress. So thanks again for being on the show. Uh, Donna, thank you all guests for listening, watching, and being a part of this episode. Wish you the best. Take care. Take care of each other. One more day. Just do today. You've been listening to the FSHD Society Radio Show.